Hey everybody, I have a little bit of a treat today I thought I'd share with you guys and that's just a gift that I was given that fits right in with my Rogue Trader Old Hammer interests of late that I've been talking about. Um, like I've mentioned in other videos, I am interested in playing the original Rogue Trader game as well as um, playing some other games that have been released. I believe um, it's called uh, Forgotten Stars. I don't actually have it yet. I think I have a friend that has it, but I, I've... Um, seen how the opportunity to see a little bit of the rules and I am interested in um, essentially trying that out and that has, requires less miniatures and so a um, bit of a different t style game and so um, and I can use my rogue trader stuff for it now I had um, one of my regular uh, gaming friends that I play quite a bit of games with um, we were talking about playing Saga he has some military Christie for the um, Crescent and Cross, but he was wanting to play some Dark Ages, and he doesn't have any. Now, I don't even think I mentioned it on the channel, but I had a friend that uh, had gotten out of Saga <clears throat> and was selling it. Uh, he had uh, the, the basic Norman set, I, think, I believe it's a four-point warband, and um, I had just picked it up. You know, I just bought it used often because he wanted to get rid of it, and I figured, well, I wasn't really planning on buying another um, warband anytime soon, but I just thought, why not? It was a really good price. And so when my other regular gaming buddy decided that um, he wanted to play some Dark Ages, I just said I'd just give it to him. So I just gave him the four-point um, warband. And, um, you know, he had just kind of mentioned that he'll just repay me back at one point. And I just said, sure, you know, whatever. Um, that sounds great. And because then some time passed. And essentially he went back home. Um, he... Uh, actually is from outside of Canada originally and he would went back home and had some stuff stored there from and he's been a long time hobbyist and he didn't bring it all with him to Canada and um, he picked, brought this back now as you can see here this is um, like a GW mail order box um, and this is like old I mean you look at this I'm not sure where the date is on this but this is like one of their old boxes which is really cool that's what he brought it back in um, and so what he ended up bringing and giving me are primarily Zotes. Now there is a little Imperial Guard guy here too, which is pretty cool. Um, but what I have here are Zotes. Um, they're essentially three complete models with two extra torsos. And I'll talk a little bit about and go through just real quick for those of you that are interested in them. Um, these are old models that are no longer produced and these ev even in newer versions. Zotes are sort of like an extinct race within the GW worlds. Both fantasy because they existed there as well as um, 40k. But just while, to give you a primer if you're interested in what Zotes are, because you probably know what Eldar are and Orcs and things like that, I'll just read right from the Rogue Trader and pan to him for a moment to just some artwork, um, some pictures, while I just read real quick from the Rogue Trader book on what Zotes are. The Xenobiologers of the Administratum believe that Zotes were created purely for combat. Tyranids, being creatures of space, suffer discomfort if they spend too long on a planet. Zotes, however, are stocky animals that feel quite at home in a wide variety of atmospheric and gravitational conditions. Like Tyranids, Zotes are centauroid. Their two rear sets of limbs are heavily built and muscular, providing the creature with its means of locomotion. The front limbs are manipulative organs of great strength and are used to wield a variety of weapons. Unlike Tyranids, Zotes will eat anything, although they largely subsist on a daily diet of three reconstituted protein-based woven biscuits called Zotabix. Zotes are common high fleet inhabitants, often equaling the number of Tyranids themselves. Although they are a slave race, Zotes occupy important positions throughout the high fleets, and individual Zotes can gain great power. Rebellion from Tyranid control is not unknown, but is extremely rare. This is because Tyranids secrete a special slave hormone which suppresses the Zotes' natural sense of independence. However, renegade Zotes do exist throughout the universe, where they 
have broken away from the high fleets or have become lost during scouting or exploration missions. Without the inhibiting influence of the tyranid slave hormone, Zotes are able to develop strong psychic powers. The path of independent Zote civilization is incredibly diverse, with small groups isolated from each other on wildly scattered planets. So, very cool um, sort of creature that is no longer seen in 40k, but could be easily put in one of these Forgotten Star campaigns as a miniature or used in the Rogue Trader proper rule set. Um, they basically look like lizard men on the top of their bodies, and they look like um, sort of like dinosaurish lower bodies, in my opinion. Um, what I have, and I'll try to throw up um, a picture of like a painted model, because in some of these cases, uh, I have one that they're actually unpainted, and in one case, it is painted. Um, this, essentially, this one here. I don't actually know all of the weapons that um, that they have because um, I'm just not that versed in them to be honest but th this is really really cool like a lot of them have face masks um, so this guy's like in many cases this one still has mold lines on him so he's never been um, painted now, I believe this is like some a type of bolter weapon that he has here. And this one has like a mask and guns in each arm. This is sort of the lower body. It's very, very cool. So that's one. This one is similar, but he's got actually a power fist. Um, so I'll show this. Now this one's been painted. Um, what I'll do is just show the upper body here. I have three lower bodies. I'm going to be mixing and matching them and I'll show you that in a moment. But this one has a mask as well, but actually also has a power fist. And then I believe this from what I my <clears throat> brief looking is a flamer. There's like a canister there and a flamer. which is really cool. So the lower body I'm going to use for this one is actually one that was used for another one that's painted. I'm just going to strip it down and and use the use this one for it. So that's my second out of my three that will be completed. This one here um, and as well as another these two, so this one went with the other body, are ones that are holding um, weapons and the, the one thing that's cool about these is their faces are um, they show more of the li lizard face, I believe, you know, like their actual face, and that's not as covered with the mask. It has a little, it has like a tube and something, maybe looks like there's something going into the mouth. No, I guess that's like the lip. Um, so the problem with this one, and I'll show an image, but the front of the gun has been cut off on these two. So whether they were used for something else's conversion years ago, um, this one was cut off. What I think I'm going to do, I think I can, um, I'm going to make an attempt as a project to do a um, press mold of the front of this gun and actually essentially restore these by doing a mold and shaving it down. Now, I think what I'll do, because I don't do a lot of this um, this press molding, I think what I'll do is do both sides, shave them down to like the halfway point and put them together and just sort of clean it up with some green stuff. Um, I think that's what I'll end up doing. The other, the other option I could do is go out and get some of that silicone stuff that um, you just throw in water and maybe close it, do a press mold where I somehow close it around it um, using that. or. An, I'm not sure, but I was thinking of maybe even just doing a green stuff press mold on both sides. And I think that's how... Now, I'm not going to use these two upper bodies right away. I am going to be on the lookout for some lower bodies of Zotes. I, I, I looked already and I hadn't seen any on eBay where people are selling parts. It's usually complete because they're kind of rare to begin with. Um, 
But I think I'm going to repair these two as a project. And then if I can come across at one point some lower bodies, I'll pick them up as I can find them. Zotes typically, I guess, in Rogue Trader travel in fours. So I have three out of the four and I have an opportunity of five, you know, if I could get some more lower bodies. Right here, the paint job actually looks kind of cool. You can see the detail. And it looks like almost like a Triceratops on the top here. It's very cool. Um, so for now, this guy will um, actually go to a different upper body, and that's what I'll show next. I have, I don't know the name of this weapon, but I have also um, their heavy weapon. I'm sure it probably says in the area I was just reading, but... This guy looks like he's got a mask on here too, but he's got a heavy weapon. Um, that he's holding. Which is cool. He's got like, he's holding a handle here and here. And so I'll have a heavy weapon guy, a guy with a gun and a power fist, and a guy with two guns. And I think that would be pretty cool for a game like, um, Forgotten Stars, you know, you just kind of create your character as like three sort of really tough zotes. I think that'd be kind of neat. Um, I have to look at the rules, see how I can make that work, but even in playing some Rogue Trader games, they might be very cool. Um, so yeah, I also got this this guy here. I have to strip, I'm going to strip him down. Um, looks like he used like maybe like I did in the beginning when I first started, used some enamel paints on things. But this will be very cool for characters in narrative games of, like, Rogue Trader or Forgotten Stars, perhaps. Or even just as a character in it. Um, it be very cool. So, um, really, really excited. Um, I think that's, you know, if you look on eBay or anywhere, like, these are hundreds and hundreds of dollars, like, to get these. And these are one of those things where I would look at it. I always think I'd love to have it, but I probably would have never justified it if I had to pay the price of what they're worth. Now, now that I have this many, I probably would spend a little coin on the lower bodies to match those other ones. And also, to be honest, I wouldn't mind, I was looking already, and I wouldn't mind, like, some of the Warhammer Fantasy ones, they're holding, like, clubs and maces and things, and they don't have, like, the masks on. I could easily put one of those in one of these games, too. I mean, who cares? Like, it'd just be a zoo within this group run over with a big mace, you know. It doesn't really matter to me. Like, I think it'd be pretty cool. So, that's my little blast from the past um, sharing of this gift, and um, really, really awesome. I'm, like, really appreciative of this. Uh, I'm really lucky to have a friend that uh, that would give me something like this and so um, awesome awesome gift and I hope that you guys enjoyed the little zote episode take care